this class is meant to cover up the lost ground we had in the second week of our lectures and in it we want to look at what are statistical symbols and then we'll look at the variables in, in any statistics which is to so yeah. this class is meant to cover the for the lost grounds we experienced in the second week and at the end of this class, you are, students are supposed to recognize statistical symbols and use them. You can list some measurement scales used in statistics. Students will also be able to define variables and describe types of variables. In statistics, statisticians have devised shorthand way of representing statements. In the course of our lesson, you will come across um, in, uh, symbols like X, symbols like Y, symbols like Z, which represent scores. You will come across symbols that represent sum of, like if you, give, if you give a test and you want to sum uh, the scores in the student's score, we have symbols to represent them. We use symbols like N to represent number of students in the class or number of um, teachers in a particular zone now if you if you have a set of numbers for for x like x is equal to 2 10 5 8 3 14 and you want to say the sum of x is a c with a circle sum of x or sigma x sigma x will mean 2 plus 10 plus 8 plus 5 plus 3 plus 14 that is all the numbers in the set of scores which are represented by x the total <coughs> sorry is 42 now we can do further operations with this this total number of x for example you have the number of um, um, the number in that set of score which is n the total number of the, of the scores is 6 and the total sum of the scores is 42. If you divide this 42 by 6, you will get 7. And what you have done is a, is a, mathemat a mathematical operation which involves the calculation of the average of the scores, the, the student the student's score. That is the total of the scores, that is adding each score and then dividing it by the number of scores. That score is called the mean or the average. Now, statisticians use various measures, various measuring scales, as the case may be, in, in measuring things in statistics. The scales may include uh, nominal scale, the ordinal scale, the interval scale, and the ratio scale. These are scales that you will come across as we go on. But what, what, what is the nominal scale, for example? The nominal scale is seen when assigning numbers. Let's say, for example, students are in a row. There is no particular order. They just stand like that in a row. And you decide to give them numbers in order to identify them. Say, you are number one, you are number two, you are number three. You, there is no particular thing you attach to those numbers. They are just arbitrarily assigned. So, there is no difference between them. You cannot compare, say, the number 1 and number 10. No, no, no. There is no comparison. You cannot subtract from them. So, what do you use the number for? Just for you to identify the students who is given number 10. You may not know the student by name. You will just come to the class or to the, to the field where the students are assembled and said, yes, who is number 10? Number 10 will be able to come out because number 10 has been identified with that number 10. Meaning with, with the, that student bears number 10 has been identified with that number. So you can just call out number 10, number 15, number 20, number 4. If you want to put them in groups of 5, you can just call them out by numbers and then group them like that. So those numbers in nominal scale cannot be added. So you have seen what a nominal scale 
will look like. We said the numbers are assigned arbitrarily. There is no particular order. Any student can take any number. There is no comparison between them. And the purpose of such numbering is just for identification. You cannot add number one and number two to make it three. No. The number three is standing on its own. And it's a different number altogether, given to a different student. Now, what is the ordinal scale? How do we look at it? Here, you can say we want to position the students. You've given them a test. And you score them. You want to put them in position according to their score. This score is the highest followed by this, followed by that. Or, for example, the height of various students in the class. They are just, the numbers in this case now are ordered. If this one is taller than this one, is seen that it's taller than that. And if the number is higher than that, it will be seen that it is higher. And these numbers can be compared, like what we're saying here. That one student is taller than the other, or one number is higher than the other. Such scale of measurement is called the ordinal scale, O R O D I N L. So, such scale is called the ordinal scale, and the numbers in the, the scores in an ordinal scale can be compared. The scores are ordered. The scores have identity. You can now look at. The comparison between an ordinal scale and a nominal scale. You will see some level of advancement in the case of the ordinal scale. Where you have no order at all in a nominal scale, the ordinal scale, you have what can be described as what? Order. They are ordered. And so you can compare the, the numbers in an the scales or the numbers in an, an ordinal scale. You can say that the height of this student or the height of this building or the height of this stick is higher than the one you are comparing it with. So you can see the operation you can do in an ordinal scale. What you usually find is we measure in both the nominal and the ordinal scale in everyday statistics. So, we will want to say that uh, you go back home, read about the scales of measurement, and then be able to find the differences between the various scales. What have we covered so far? We have looked at symbols in statistics, though we do not go into very serious details. But as you are going on, you will, see, you will have, you will come across different types of symbols in the text, and as we are applying them, like when you want, after this class, we are going to um, representation in scores, representation, and so on and so forth in descriptive statistics. You will see symbols like F, which is the frequency symbols like that. You will see many other symbols that will come across in, in this course. Now, the other thing we want to discuss today is the variable. Variable. You will come in, while we are going on in the class, we will be talking about variable in your, stat, in your statistics, in your research. You will also have to identify variables dependent variable and independent variable they will come to play while you are doing your project so but we want to say as far as statistics is concerned what is a variable we define a variable as any characteristics or property of an object or event or phenomenon that can take on different set of values or quantities different set of values or qualities. So a variable can take values or any characteristics which can be measured. They are said to be variable. Examples of variables include length, height, 
intelligence, achievement. These ones are called variables. But depending on the type they are, it is either they are what we call um, quantitative variable or qualitative variable. Now, in qualitative variable, one, you can describe it as a situation where you can assign names to, to a particular set of things. Let us assume there are boys and girls in the class. You can assign name to them, to the students in the class. They are male students and they are female students. These names are just assigned. And they are again for what we call identity. The names are assigned so that you can identify them. So this variable is qualitative. You just define them. You just give them because you want to qualify what they are. You can say that um, um, his intelligence is low or high. You just you have qualified his intelligence. But you can also use numbers to as names to assign to various streams in the class. You can say they are class one, class two, and class three without necessarily attaching any particular magnitude to them. Like class one can be class one A, B, C, D. You just differentiate them. It's, the, uh, it's a variable that has, you are just qualifying that particular um, um, class or variable as the case may be. A qualitative variable usually take finite values. That is, there is no fractions among them. I'm teaching. I'm teaching. So you cannot have half female, half male. No. But they are just either male or female. So the number is finite. Then these numbers can also be said to be discrete because you don't have fractions. You cannot hack fractions. So the, all the qualitative variables can be measured on either nominal or ordinal scales. Then you have the quant what we describe as the quantitative variables. These ones can be measured using, using acceptable procedures like the um, interval scale, as the case may be. And qualitative variables can take on fractional values, which can be measured by the interval scale. Length. Length can take one and a half centimeter or 120 centimeter height, body temperature, taste scores are some examples that can be found in, um, in the, uh, what, what is it called, um, quantitative um, variables. So today we have looked at, all together, we we'll just look at symbols as used in statistics, and then we, we see um, types of variables, and then we concluded by looking at measurement skills. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.